Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Out the Podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. <clears throat> Still on the mend here, day by day. <laughs> but uh, here, doing a, here to drop another rant. We talk facts over feelings. Thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. We will definitely drop our first membership live on Tuesday at 9 p.m., so be here. Don't miss it. Become a member today. Caitlin Clark said no. By now, you all seen, I'm sure, plenty of other people who have talked about it. I did mention it in my video talking about the unrivaled draft <clears throat> as that information did drop while I was recording that video. So I did mention that it was reported that Caitlin Clark had said no to unrivaled. Now it's clearly been made official and everyone knows it and it's been talked about by everybody around. Caitlin Clark has told Unrivaled, hell no. She's given them the double middle finger and said, good luck, ladies. Show me what you can do without me. That is what she said by saying no. This isn't about rest. This isn't about anything other than show me what you got. And then I'll have a conversation with y'all next year. That's my that's my opinion <clears throat> because the reports are that she was offered a truckload of money for three months, less than three months actually, and she said no, and I'm glad she stood on that. I'm glad she held her feet in the sand and said no, nah, I'm not doing this. I don't think it's beneficial for her in any way to her game, to her growth, to her physical growth, to her game growth, to all these things that you know, will make her better in the WNBA season next year. <clears throat> but, of course, you know, Unrivaled has this dream that Caitlin Clark would say yes. They <clears throat> sold a bunch of sponsorships on a bill of goods, hoping the golden ticket would say yes. But the golden ticket has said no. So now these sponsors, I can all, I can all, all but wonder if they are – peeing down their legs right now saying no one's going to watch this now. <clears throat> it's bad enough that the product is not going to be great in terms of what you see on the court. The entire concept of a three-on-three -three condensed full court is a gimmick, corny, and not real basketball. A bunch of teams have a bunch of teammates on them from their WNBA teams. You have teams that are heavy, teams that are light. You have the two wild card spots that are still open, for, for which we don't know who they will be. We do know it will not be Kate, will not be Caitlin Clark. I give her credit. She could have fallen to the pressure. She could have said, "You know what? They're bothering me enough. I'll, I'll do it." She could have done that. She chose not to. And I'm glad she stuck to her guns. Because at the end of the day, this is the same person that was dogged by most of these women that are going to be in this who are now basically begging her to come join them. It serves them right. It serves them right. By no means do I wish for the Unrivaled League to fail. And that was a comment that was made in, one of the, in the video I made the other day where someone said that the podcasts like mine, like Ben and Chicks Chick to the Scars and all these other podcasts, now our commentary is wishing for Unrivaled to fail. I don't wish Unrivaled to fail. Not in any way. Do I think it's going to fail because it's being run in a completely incompetent manner? Yeah, I do. I don't think it lasts very long. But does that mean I wish failure upon it? Not at all. Not at all. I've never said that I wish the league fails. And if I have, then I take that back. I don't wish the league fails. But I don't recall ever saying, I hope it fails. I'm sure I said, I think it will fail. I have said it's dead on arrival. I said it's going to be a disaster. Those things I absolutely do remember saying, and I do stand by every one of those things that I said. But I don't wish it to fail. I wish it great success. I hope people do watch. I hope 
<clears throat> I hope it's good enough to keep people's eyes on it. Do I believe that will happen? No. And there's a bunch of cat factors for that reason, including you're starting off during NFL playoffs. Um, you're starting off during the NCAA. I think there might maybe the national championship for the NCAA might be in that first weekend. But definitely NFL playoffs are going on. You get you're in the height of college basketball season. You're in the you're in the heart of the NBA season. So there's lots of reasons that it's not going to make it. Not to mention your game nights are on Friday, Saturday, and Monday. That's not the greatest. <laughs> that's not the greatest time slot in the evening. On the weekends. You're not the W, you're not the UFC running pay-per-views. You're not college football with a monster Saturday night game. You're a gimmick, corny, contrived version of basketball that is not really a good idea. If you had told me you're doing a five-on-five -five league, I would actually buy more into that. But I'm not buy, I have a I don't buy into a three on three condensed league being played in four quarters in one location that you still haven't announced yet and you're two months out. I think it's real hard to be successful with something like that. But that's my opinion. But when I this one particular person who I did respond to in detail mentioned that, I was like, that's not true. I'm not a I don't want them to fail. But comparing this to the way the players in the WNBA treated Caitlin Clark upon arrival, it's apples to oranges. I'm not treating individuals any which way. I'm talking about a league. The WNBA, for lack of for, for, for better or worse, does not want Caitlin Clark to fail. If you believe that the WNBA wants Caitlin Clark to fail, you're out of your damn mind. And that goes for anybody. They don't want her to fail. The league. Why? Because the league is run by the NBA. The NBA does not want her to fail, <clears throat> which is why the NBA had no problem giving $200 million a year for the next decade because of her. The problem with the WNBA is the WNBA is run by a bunch of incompetent fools who don't know how to maximize someone like Caitlin Clark. And by no means would I... Would, like when people talk about like she got fouled hard and blah blah blah, that shit happens. That's gonna happen. How you manage the situation, that's another story. And the WNBA failed in that regard. The WNBA does not have the expertise or the or the intellect or the the experience to know how to handle a player who is bigger than your league. A player who is goes beyond your league. And that's what Caitlin Clark does. She's bigger than the league. <clears throat> She's just bigger than the WNBA. And they didn't know how to handle it. So they, they got their players who are jealous. They're jealous because she's making way more money than them in the, in the endorsement market. And even though mo many of us think that her agents are completely incompetent as well, but they're jealous of her. They're jealous of the attention. And instead of saying, I'm jealous, I wish I was her, they say she can't shoot. I'm sorry. They say she all she can do is shoot. They say she's not that good. They say everything to disparage her game, which is complete and utter bullshit because we all know that her skills are better than anyone in the league right now. Skills that no one's ever seen this league before. But instead of voicing that, yeah, I'm just jealous. I wish I was making her money. I wish I was getting the attention she's getting. They turn it into her game ain't that good. And that's not reality. We know her game is that good. So when you compare what podcasters are saying about Unrivaled to the WNBA and Caitlin Clark, we're a little podcast. The WNBA is the Goliath. They're the big man in the room. 
I don't believe for one second the WNBA wants Caitlin Clark to fail at all. Are there players who I think wanted her to fail? Yeah, I do. Players, because they're haters. Yeah, I do, I do believe those people exist. But don't compare a podcast talking about a league to an individual versus a league. Because <laughs> that's what Caitlin Clark was, an individual versus a league. But I don't think that WNBA wants her to fail. They damn well know that she's their meal ticket. She's their meal ticket to everything. And that's the problem with Unrivaled. They refuse to acknowledge that this league has a chance just because Caitlin Clark's in the WNBA. Because nobody would have cared about this two years ago, even four, four years ago. Heck, last year, nobody would have cared about this. This was even news because they kept Caitlin Clark's they kept they kept talking about Caitlin Clark. Unrivaled talk about Caitlin Clark. You think these leaks get out by accident? When their president is saying, we'll always have a space open for her. They're keeping her name in the conversation. <clears throat> and it benefited them to do so. She brought all the attention even to this, even to this league that's not going to have her in it. She's brought the attention. She's made you notice. These investors, these investors invested, in my opinion, quite likely with the expectation that Caitlin Clark will be part of this. She's not. So now what? Now you have to do your job. Now you have to do your job. Now you have to do your job. Now you have to do your job, and that job is to put on the best product you possibly can. Make it as interesting to the beholder as you possibly can. What that is, I don't know. I know what my opinion was on that draft. Team selection, they failed. What will that be for this? I have no idea. Why? Because they've told us nothing. Some people think it's a reality TV show. I don't like that. I do think you could have some reality components, but not make it a reality TV show where we're watching these women for 10 straight weeks living in a house like a like an ultimate fighter or a, or a, what's the other show? What's the other show? Another show I can think of. The ultimate fighter would be the one for sports, but a, a, a love is blind or a love island or some crap like that. No, I, I don't I don't care about that. That I have no interest in that. Do I think you can provide background and 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 back, you know, and and again, I'm not talking about backroom edited stuff. I'm talking about raw and uncut. Edited behind the scenes, nobody cares about. We want to see the raw, unedited, uncut reality. That reality being. Let us watch practice. Have practices for these teams live on, on YouTube. The whole practice. Let us watch it all. Let people interact with people. <clears throat> Put, make, make the players every single week do one-on-ones, with, with, not with media, YouTube one-on-ones. So let's put it this way. I'm doing a recording right now. You'll comment on it. But let's say I'm doing this live. I'm doing it live. This is not a podcast, an interview session. This is talk. Maybe they have a producer ask them some questions. And let the people in the in the let the people interact, comment, ask questions. Make it somewhere where people are involved. These are th that's a thought I have, but what? what do, but other than that, like I don't know where it's gonna be. They haven't told us. We don't know anything yet. Yeah, Miami, somewhere in Miami. We have no idea where. They've given us no idea as to what it's gonna be. So their job is to make it interesting, make it fun, make us want to turn it on. 
And that's their job to do it. And it's their job to show Caitlin Clark that they can make this work without her. That they can make profit off this without her. And that they will have a well, that and that she will have a reason next year to want to be a part of it. So no, I don't wish them failure. I hope they do great. Do I think they'll do great? No. Because I think they're being run by idiots who have been dropping the ball every step of the way. So what happens when you put people without experience in charge of stuff? When people who don't have experience are put in charge of projects like this, you have screw-ups all the way through. The screw-up number one, adding six players. That was a disastrous decision. Telling another screw-up, telling us it'll be the 30 best players in the league. That's factually not the, not the case. So there's thing after thing after thing after thing that they can continue to make a mistake with. And the president's saying there's always a spot for Caitlin. You just insulted the whole damn group that, 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 that have already committed to you. That's an insult. You insulted them. And you don't realize that you did. Or maybe you didn't, you don't care. But these are the things, there are things that you, you, you have been botching left and right. And I am, I completely believe that all the sponsorships that they've gotten are because in their mind they thought they could lure Caitlin Clark into this thing. Because at some point those sponsors are going to want some ROI or they will bail. So they got one year to show them that they can make this work without Caitlin. Because if it doesn't work without Caitlin Clark, there's no reason on earth that she would want to do this next year. If it even happens. <clears throat> so no, I don't wish failure for this. I don't wish failure at all. I want them. I want the league to be successful. I would love it for them to be successful. If, if, if they're successful, that means they're putting on a good product. Look what happened. Look, look what's happening right now in the, in the in the NCAA in women's basketball. No one's watching it. Nobody. You're getting 300,000 viewers. <clears throat> that that's trash. That's terrible. And I'm not talking about regular, I'm talking about the biggest teams in the country. They're not getting viewers. It's the Caitlin Clark effect. She's not there anymore. No one cares. That's why I don't think Unrivaled's going to work without her. But now the challenge is for Unrivaled to make it work without her. I'm glad she stood her ground, though, because I wouldn't want to be the face of something that's brand new that features a whole bunch of people that don't like me or publicly disparaged me. I wouldn't want to be a part of it. Let alone one of the founders of this thing disparaged me. Screw that. Make it work yourself. The idea came up because I'm here anyhow. So let's see what you can do, and then, I, then we can talk next year. Let me know your thoughts about Caitlin Clark saying no. Let me know, let me know your thoughts on my, I'm, my feelings on this whole damn thing. Let me, you know, leave a comment. Be sure to pound the like button, subscribe, become a member. And once again, greatly appreciate you as my throat is still on the mend. And I mean, it's just, this is a, a lasting cold. It sucks. But that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate y'all. Come on now.